it's like it was just yesterday we had the World Series between the underdog Washington Nationals and the heavily favored Houston Cheat Rose. And uh, <clears throat> fortunately, the baseball gods prevailed and denied the Houston Cheat Rose of their illegitimate World Series title if they had won. Um, but baseball season is just about upon us once more. And one of the things that goes through my mind is Albert Pujols, the player. Albert Pujols, the player, and whether or not he should retire. Okay? Um, Albert Pujols has not been the same player for a very, very long time. All right? Um, pretty much his, his entire 30s, he's been not the same. He wasn't the same player that he was with the Cardinals. Um, but the last couple of years, his decline, kind of weird. Um, let me, let me segue into a comparison of past baseball players. Like Babe Ruth, you know what I'm saying? The salt and the swat, the great Bambino or whatever, right? Uh, it was the last couple of years where you saw the decline. The last couple of years with the Yankees and that Boston, um, Boston Braves stint. All right, that's when you saw the weight gain. Most of the footage that you see of Babe Ruth, uh, it's from the last the, the last couple of years of his career. He, he got a lot heavier. Um, the, you know, the home run trot got slower. The home runs themselves got fewer. Um, wasn't as good a keen hitter as he was earlier. With Lou Gehrig. It wasn't so much as the ravages of age that destroyed him. It was the ravages of the disease that he uh, developed that became his namesake, unfortunately. Then you have Joe DiMaggio. Uh, Joe DiMaggio, the last couple of years of his career, it was bad. You know what I mean? Um, the biggest example of it, when you talk about parallels between his peak and his nadir, would be Willie Mays. Willie Mays was simply amazing. In his best days in the 1950s and 1960s with the San Francisco Giants. But his days with the New York Mets, especially his last season, were sad. Um, not the same hitter as far as average or power. Um, his defensive abilities had diminished uh, precipitously. I then there were some other guys, of course, Reggie Jackson. Uh, the last couple years of his career. Um, he was never a guy to hit for a high average, but the last couple years, man, he made Dave Kingman look like a great hitter. Um, so, yeah, but Pujols has not been um, himself for a while. But one thing I have noticed is that his decline seems to have slowed. Like, what I mean is, even though he's putting up kind of like average numbers now he doesn't really seem like he's bottoming out faster um like anytime soon you know and the thing about it you look at where he is now all right you look at his numbers if he was to retire right now he would be only the third major league baseball player in history to have a 300 batting average 3,000 hits, and 600 home runs. The only other two would be Willie Mays and Hank Aaron. Barry Bonds never reached 3,000 hits, uh, nor did he finish with 300 batting average. His batting average was 298. Uh, Alex Rodriguez finished with a career batting average, I think it was something like 296 or something like that, 295. So, and Babe Ruth didn't reach 3,000 hits. But the thing about it, if more than likely, if Albert Hujols plays this season and beyond, he can kiss that 300 career batting average goodbye. 300 is like the barometer of a great hitter. Anything under that, still good, but it's like 300 is that great rounded number. Um, 
the last couple of years, Pujols has been something like a 250, 260 hitter. He could give you 23 home runs. He's still a very productive run runner, a run producer. Um, on the all-time list, I think Albert Pujols, I just looked it up, he was he's 17th all-time in run scored. Um, he's sixth all time in home runs behind, uh, behind, uh, uh, Barry Bonds with 762, Hank Aaron with 755, Babe Ruth with 714, uh, Alex Rodriguez with 696, and Willie Mays hit 660. Pujols is coming into the season with 656. Um, now barring injury, He's going to easily surpass Willie Mays. The problem is, for the last couple of years, Pujols has been hard to even crack 30 home runs. So, if anybody has any hopes of him surpassing uh, Barry Bonds, it's going to be a tall order. I mean, he's going to have to hope to be able to produce at this level for another really realistically four years and be injury free he's going to have to play until he's about 44 years old and he's going to have to still produce at the same level and he's going to have to be able to stay healthy then he might have a shot at Barry Bonds record but you know the laws of physics and biology kind of tell you that it's going to be hard Um, he's only a hundred and six away from tying it. If this was 10 years ago, you know, I'd be like, yeah, he's going to do it. But now, I don't know. Um, the RBI record is more likely his to fall. Um, he's right now tied for fourth fall time with that racist son of a bitch, Cap Anson. Um, he's not too far behind, I think, when it comes to RBIs. I think he's like three... I think I just looked at it just now. Because I think he cracked the 2000 mark as far as RBIs. Here we go. I know the all time leader is uh, Hank Aaron when it comes to RBIs. With 2,297. All right, second is Babe Ruth with 2,214. Third is Alex Rodriguez with 2,086. Yeah, so Cap Anson and, and Pujols are tied at fourth with 2,075. So Pujols is 222 behind Hank Aaron as far as RBI is concerned. So Barring injury, he's going to climb into third place in RBIs. He could do it. Um, he would just have to play another three to four seasons. So this is the thing. I mean, does Pujols, at this point, is he playing for numbers? Uh, I know he said he wants to fulfill his contract, which goes all the way through next year. So that would take him into his 21st season. Uh, theoretically, At that point, if Pujols were to stay uh, healthy and to play a uh, high amount of games, then that could give him an opportunity. I'm just talking stats-wise. I know know these guys don't play for numbers. They play for championships, but I'm just speaking. Uh, He would more than likely sacrifice his 300 career batting average. Um, He would possibly get to 700 home runs. So that would push him past Willie Mays, and past Alex Rodriguez. Then he would have Roof in his sights, later on May, uh, Aaron, and then Bonds. But it's going to be tough. I mean, because you're asking a guy who then would be 41 years old, going on 42 years old, to then be able to hit another 60 to 70 home runs. Um... And will that be something that's motivating him? Would it be to go for a record? 
I mean, would you want to hang? Would you want to be a guy? I understand some guys do play for numbers, but the thing about it, if you talk about, you know, LeBron, whether or not he passes his numbers or he's playing for stats, at least LeBron is actually still a very, very, very productive NBA basketball player. Would a guy be extremely selfish if he's actually hurting the team with his overall play, but he's hanging on just for a record? That's when you. That's when it becomes a question. You know, that's when it becomes questionable. So if he's able to stay productive at, at, at to the point at least he's an average hitter, then I guess there's really no problem with Al Pujol still playing. Um. You know, uh, the the thing about it, though, I remember when Pujols was at his best, though. When Pujols was at his best, it was in the post-Bonds era. I'd say the second half of the 2000s. That's when Pujols was at his best, when he was in St. Louis. Um, he was the best player in the game. Um, he was the most dangerous hitter in the game. And he did it without the assistance of steroids. He, had, he could hit for power. He could hit for average. Uh, he wasn't fooled by virtually any pitch. Um, you know, it was nothing for Pujols to hit 330, 40 home runs, 130 RBIs, you know, uh, great on-base percentage. You know, I remember when he was a rookie, his rookie year, if memory serves me correctly, was Mark McGuire's last year in the majors, 2001. And you could see then that this guy was going to be a tremendous player. Um, I think he hit 37 home runs as a rookie. And remember, this is before they juiced the baseballs like they do now. Now, you could say it was a steroids era, but Pujols wasn't on steroids. All right? That was just natural power. Um, so, you know, I just hope he's able to have a very productive uh, last part of his career. The 40s, by that I mean players in their 40s, it just hasn't been kind historically uh, as, far as, uh, the, the, as far as the ability of their production. With Major League Baseball, players in their 40s generally aren't very productive. Um, there's been exceptions, but we'll have to see. Um, go on to Reggie Jackson for a second. Reggie Jackson finished his career with a 262 career batting average. Okay. And many people knock him for that. But this is why I say like the 40s aren't kind to some of these guys. If you go all the way back to like Reggie's, I think, 1982 season, right? Right after he left the Yankees, his career batting average at that time was 277. Which just sounds better, you know. What I mean, it, it just—that's how—that's how much of a toll his eroding skills and numbers took on this overall uh, statistics. But anyway, if you guys follow baseball, tell me what you guys think about Pujols and whether or not he should retire or whether he should keep going and play. Um, you know, I don't know. At this point, I, I guess the Angels, from what I can tell, they've been a mediocre team. Um, does he fulfill his contract, try to play for a winner in his career with a great team? Uh, should he try to go to like maybe the Yankees or some other organization where, um, in a reduced role, he could still be a good fit while he could still extend his career? What do you think he should do? Tell me what you guys do.